before seeing video and revealing some disturbing allegations about her childhood. ABC's Deborah Roberts is here with more. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Cecilia. For years, those closest to Whitney Houston have stayed pretty quiet about the dark moments in her life in an effort to protect the image of the superstar singer. Well, now they are, after six years after her shocking death, family and friends are opening up. Her brother Gary telling me that he can finally breathe after sharing the truth about his sister. Her talent epic, that voice, a showstopper, racing the top 10 charts for more than two decades. Then came the startling spiral, the fall from grace, and Whitney Houston's stunning death. In the new documentary, Whitney, those closest to the superstar break their silence with a raw, honest peek into her tragic life and death. I wanted to tell her life story, to celebrate her, and to try and explain her. I know, I know. The film filled with haunting, never-before-seen home videos, hinting at the singer's fragility. Her brothers and sister-in-law, Pat, revealing what they say is a dark family secret, a bombshell claim that Houston was molested as a child. Gary told me that you know, he, was, he was molested when he was a kid by a woman in the family, and uh, um, he thought that also Whitney had been as well. In the film, it's alleged cousin Dee Dee Warwick, who died in 2008, was the abuser, sister to famed Dionne Warwick. And family members shed new light on Houston's cocaine addiction. Gary admitting he often got high with his sister, but realized she was in trouble when she began missing shows. Because she was high. Because she was using somewhere. Or, or coming down from using and not being able to perform at the best of her level. For the first time, the inner circle sharing details about Houston's close personal relationship with creative director Robin Crawford. And Houston's tumultuous marriage to singer Bobby Brown. Some say he felt eclipsed by his wife. When you got people in the media talking about Mr. Houston instead of Mr. Brown, you know, he let it get to him. Can I just ask you real quick, Miss Houston? Mrs. Brown, man. Mrs. Mrs. Brown. Houston Brown. With perhaps the most poignant moment in the film, Houston improvising and beautifully singing to her young daughter, Bobby Christina. Age 22 would eerily die just like her mom three years after Houston's death. Painful memories for the singer's family. Some saying that she was haunted by thoughts that maybe she wasn't a good enough mother. So many of the family's uh, secrets laid bare in this powerful documentary. It really is powerful, Deb. Thank you. And I want to bring in now Pat Houston, executive director of this documentary, and the sister-in-law and former manager uh, for Whitney, here exclusively with us this morning. Pat, hearing her voice, the voice of a generation, it just brings you back. You made this movie, you say it could only have been told by the people who really knew her. Exactly. You know, people that have dealt with her emotions from the day she was born until the day she died, that people that were around her, people that really knew her, you know, and had to deal with uh, everything, really lived what she lived, actually. And you see that play out in the movie. Uh, we see some really intimate scenes. We hear stories about her that we had never heard and known before. You know, I, I want to ask, I wonder, because you decided to tell such an intimate story, were you concerned at all that this could have been seen as a betrayal? Uh, is this the version of, of the story Whitney would have wanted out there? Well, it's, uh, you know, everyone that has a life has a story. It's her story, and it's played out. Um, in the documentary, she has, um, she narrated a lot of it herself. So, yeah, it's just her life and her story, as, as the family would see it and the friends who dealt with her every single day. The, one of the stories that you tell in it tells uh, the story, your husband, Gary, uh, speaks in it. They talk about introducing her to drugs when she was just 16 years old. This started really, really young. Was it hard to, to tell these stories, such an such a intimate detail, some, some really raw stories about that? Well, it was, wasn't my husband, Garrett, it was my brother-in-law. Your brother-in-law, sorry, yes. Yes. Um, you know, for him, I guess it was therapeutic to really talk about it. You know, it was like a pressure, pressure cooker, you know, opening up, you know, for him to reveal and just, he was speaking about himself and, and talking about his sister. 
his sister, but, you know, he just needed to talk. And, you know, after sharing his sister with the world for over 30 years and just having to protect an image, you know, that moment was his, and he just talked, you know, and it kind of um, was kind of a, a healing uh, process for him as well. I heard you all talk about, when I spoke with you and Gary, you talked about the healing, and there's so much of this film that is sort of dark and shocking, but you also talked about tender moments, Whitney having the Bible that her mom gave her, even till her death, really. You know what, you know, <clears throat> a, a, a lot of theories about her and her mother not being close are just absolutely false. You know, Whitney carried, she wore her mother's Fendi um, slippers all the time. She wore, she had a, a purse and she had her mother's scarf tied around her scarf everywhere. It, it didn't matter where she was traveling to. She had that scarf on her bag. And um, that Bible, you know, Whitney has traveled all over the world. She has moved from, um, had homes in Florida, New Jersey, um, California, but she still had her mother's Bible. And it was given to her, it was signed 1987, and it was a, um, her mother just stated in there, take God with you everywhere you go. So she had her mother with her all the time. She she really respected her mother. You know, she really and truly did. And uh, that that's that's a blessing. Her family, the whole family, was uh, was was such a part of her life throughout it all. Uh, she they, they were they were there and, and part of her her work. She supported so many people uh, through her job, right? Um, what do you say to people who say that maybe family members helped enable Whitney in the end? Well, you know, when Whitney became who she became, a superstar and an icon, Whitney wanted her family there. Everybody else to her was a stranger. Everybody else had to be hired. Her family didn't. They were going to be there regardless. So um, I, I, I can honestly say, yeah, we, we could enable sometimes with certain things. I mean, she was a brat sometimes, you know? For me, I called her my bratty little sister, you know? But um, family's going to always be around, and it's good. And sometimes family's there for a, a different type of support than people that work around you. So family was always good. And what are you going to say to people who might look at this and say, maybe the family let her down? What are you going to say to those folks? That is not true. Her family has always been there for her. And I know that because I've been around for nearly 30 years. You know, any, anything or anything, in, for anything that was happening or going on, I would always go to the boss, and that was her mom. You know, and she would support anything that we needed to do. You know, and um, there were lots of struggles. But when you have strength like that coming from Sissy, and she's a very spiritual woman you know a, a, a lot of things go on in your life but she has such a strong foundation in in god and um she taught that to her kids you know she did but um it is a powerful story that you are telling in a powerful film thank you for being here with us this morning whitney hits theaters july 6th ginger now over to you yeah let's time for your gma moment i gotta tell you cecilia everybody you know when somebody comes up this is ann from philadelphia by the way and they just start